So there are eight bees in front of you. They all look the same, but which one do you think will become the queen bee? Actually, you can place any of them on the throne, if you know how. It's been two hours and the temperature dropped. It's now optimal. There are ten more hours before the experiment is over, but we need to start right now. The right ingredients, perfect conditions, steady hands are all it takes to create a queen bee. Actually, bees can raise a queen bee naturally without human intervention, but circumstances may be different. Sometimes you just need to make a new queen, raised from the same fertilized eggs as worker bees, but kept under special conditions, with the help of a special tool which looks like well, something between a syringe, a hook, and a shovel. The larvae are placed in special cups. This should be done in cool, wet weather, larvae should be fed and under the age of 24 hours. Yes, during the struggle for the throne, age is a factor. After a while, you can return the larvae to the colony and then the bees will do the rest. They feed the larvae only with royal jelly, no pollen or honey. This is what the queen's diet looks like, and so in roughly two weeks, they'll get their queen. Or rather, several queens at once, but eventually, like in Game of Thrones, only one will remain. Because bees simply have no concept of a royal family. As I said, queens are raised from exactly the same eggs as regular bees. In this sense, insects have a kind of democracy? Though seems like I already mentioned this in my other video. By the way, why do humans actually do all this? They tend to the larva, poke some tools at them, check the temperature. Well, I mean the overall idea is clear, the hive simply needs a queen. It can't exist without it. Bees do their duties when they have someone to work for, but why did this happen? A huge number of animals on our planet depend on their leaders. Elephants have matriarchs, wolves have a couple of alphas, and so on. Well, I hardly need to tell you. Scientists have long tried to find an answer to the question, and it seems that it's all down to decision making. When creatures band together in groups, they need someone to have the final say. Can you imagine how much you have to choose from and think of in the wild? Was it a falcon or just a shadow? Should I stay here or go somewhere else to find food? Run from the predator or attack it together? No wonder the pack is often led by the smartest or most experienced animal. They know exactly what to do. That's it. I can't take it anymore. I've had enough. I won't be your leader anymore. Get out of here! I said get out! How do we get out of here? But if you think the leaders in the animal world appeared not so long ago, as soon as all sorts of not very intelligent mammals came to be, then here's a fact. Trilobites acted the same way. These small arthropods are already extinct, but we have enough fossils to understand what their life was like. In one of these fossils, scientists found the trilobites moving in orderly cues, following the leader. This fossil is about 480 million years old, and it's not even the oldest example of leadership. There are shrimp-like creatures that did the same thing 520 million years ago. In short, nature has long invented packs and their leaders. Well, let's get back to the bees. An obvious fact, their job involves not only flying from one flower to another and making honey, you should thank the bees even for the apple on your table. So agriculture needs these insects a lot. The value of agriculture crops dependent on honeybee pollination was estimated to be $14.6 billion per year in the US. That's data for 2000. No wonder the job of beekeepers is highly valued. And the honey? That's, well, just a nice bonus. At the same time, the bees themselves are not that expensive. I haven't analyzed the market in detail, but the most important bee in the colony, that is the queen bee, costs about $25 to $40. It's like one and a half or two pizzas, depending on the filling, of course. What do you mean I'm worth two pizzas? I should be worth at least three, not less. But bees are good not only for pollination of all sorts of plants, some of them work for the police. The most common human police, and I'm not describing the plot of some comic book or the second part of Zootopia now, the police keep hives where the insects do their usual job, fly back and forth, find good plants, come back and tell each other exactly what plants they found. Depending on these stories, the bees tell them through dancing. The police check the pollen they brought and arrest people who are growing any forbidden plants. Do you have a cactus at home? Maybe your friends are growing cacti at home. Do you like flowers? Well, I love them! Okay, okay, that's not entirely true, but not entirely false either. The police have not yet learned to read bee dances, and they don't detain people based on the testimony of insects. 
However, there is research in the so-called pollen forensics. Two seemingly identical forest areas may have completely different pollen assemblages. If you know this and can tell the difference, just like bees do, you can discover the most incredible evidence. For example, if a suspect has pollen on his clothes from the area where the crime was committed, this is a reason to be suspicious of him. So even if the police don't work with bees yet, they at least think like bees. What could possibly go wrong in a beehive when the bees are so cool that even the police look up to them? Way more than you can imagine. What looks like a perfect mechanism can collapse suddenly and for no apparent reason. Bees suddenly attack each other, destroying both adults and fertilized eggs. This is a real uprising, a violent riot, complete chaos, during which the queen loses her grip on the colony and can be killed. For a long time, scientists had no idea what caused these uprisings, although they suspected this had something to do with the rapid increase in the size of the colony. Seems like the more bees there are, the more likely it is that everything will get out of control. But it looks like it's all down to wax. By checking its chemistry, bees determine at which point the colony becomes unstable for some reason, and after that, they just spring into acting. Hmm, guys, you know what? What? Bee uprising! <laughs> But some bees seem to believe struggling for power in a hive is not something they subscribe to. It's better to live separately, on your own, and use other bees' nests for reproduction. You know cuckoos? These bees act pretty much the same way. They don't build nests and don't collect pollen. Instead, cuckoo bees get into the colonies of other, regular bee species, lay their eggs there, eat something, and fly away. After a while, the larva hatches and survive on food stored by other bees. After a while, it'll go in search of a caring family for its offspring. Surprisingly enough, many bee families adopted this behavior independently. I even found statistics that say 15% of all species of bees behave like cuckoos, and they don't feel any remorse. Listen, that's not fair. Seizing power, fighting, laying eggs in other bees' nests. Don't bees have any police officers? Surprisingly enough, they do. Of course, not in the way we imagine. While the bee police also certainly don't monitor the trafficking in illegal substances, actually, these are ordinary worker bees who make sure that only the queen lays eggs. They destroy the ones laid by ordinary bees to maintain order. Well, until the wax chemistry changes, of course. Though the bee police can't keep order in the hive when there's a bug nearby. A bug called the bee assassin. It's a true professional who knows its business, can fly and track down plants visited by bees, the bee assassin's front legs are very sticky and allow it to grab prey. Of course, even such a predator won't attack the entire hive and won't stand a chance. But bees are very clever creatures. Who knows? Maybe they've already realized they need their own hitman. The job's done. The target's been removed. It's all good. As agreed, here's your honey flakes. Don't forget to add milk. Actually, bees are known for being very organized. Everyone has a job to do, everyone is working hard, and thanks to this, the hives are thriving. But this is only the first impression. Everything is not nearly as perfect as it seems in a bee society. Just take a closer look and you'll see the beehive as a miniature Gotham City full of crime and dark violence. Do you know what euthanasia is? Quite a controversial topic people seem to never stop arguing about. It also exists in the world of insects, and it looks really terrifying. According to the book by Robin Moritz and Robin Crew, The Dark Side of the Hive, bees kill sick offspring and even sick adults by smothering the former in resin or mud and literally tearing apart the latter. <sighs> but afterwards, the bees must dispose of the body since otherwise they can become sources of an epidemic for the entire hive. This is the job of undertaker bees. I think that's not a full-time job. After all, bees don't kill all the time. Whatever the case, the undertaker bees get rid of the dead, simply tossing them out of the hive somewhere far away. Similar behavior is displayed by ants. They either try to move the dead as far from home as possible or make cemeteries in a separate room of the anthill. This is something like a tomb where ants carefully lay their dead, and it looks interesting. By the way, the undertaker ants try to stay away from other ants, not to accidentally infect them with something they picked up from the dead, very responsible, guys. Well, let's get back to Bee Gotham City. There are uprisings here. Strong bees take down the weak. What's missing? Well, of course, robbing. Can you imagine what an apiary looks like? Several hives located close enough to each other. The inhabitants of each hive must produce a certain amount of honey required for the survival of the entire colony. But sometimes there just isn't enough. 
and then the bees act like the dishonest crews on some factory, they steal the products from their colleagues. Of course, you can't do it in a stealthy way, and robbery often develops into a full-fledged clash, a real bee war. Weak colonies may not be able to defend their hive and are completely devastated. And yes, don't forget to mention in the protocol that bees steal only honey and nectar, but at the same time, they don't touch pollen, larvae, and the queen bee. These robbers have some code of honor. See you later.